artists have a special relationship with tools because they shape the way that we express ourselves. For example, in the year 1700, when the forte piano was invented, and I've drawn a very historically accurate <laughs> drawing for you here, all of a sudden, composers could express themselves in a new way. It used to be that keyboard music was essentially one volume, but now you could start very quiet, and then get very loud, and then get very quiet. And people thought it was so cool to have all of this expression in music, both kinds of music, really, like country and western, that they named the entire instrument the loud soft. So if you hear someone saying, I'm busy tonight, I've got a gig playing the loud soft, you know what they're referring to. Another example, when we invented the movie camera, we went from telling stories around the campfire to acting them out on the stage to projecting them with light and sharing them around the entire world. It was a remarkable transformation, and it was fueled by new tools, new technology. And think of the golden age of timeless classics that resulted, things like Citizen Kane, Gone with the Wind, Sharknado 5, you have to see that one twice to really get the subtlety. <laughs> now, as a musician and an artist, really, my favorite tool of all the things that are coming online is, of all things, computer code. And this is some code that I've written. And when you look it up, look at it on the screen, who couldn't help but fall in love with it? Because it's so cuddly, right? That's what you were all thinking, cuddly. Now, all of the creative work I'm about to share with you is from code that I've written. And I love working with code because it's so flexible and it lets me explore so many different things. This first example is a piece of music. For centuries, composers have entertained themselves by taking music from an earlier era, putting their own spin on it, and composing something new. So for this, I've written a program that extracts features from the music of J.S. Bach, filters them through the music of jazz musician John Coltrane, and puts some of my own spin on it, too. So this is what it sounds like. So, oh, thank you. I, you know, I'm available for weddings and cocktails to bring the self-playing piano with me, the loud soft. Um, I was able to write the code that created that music because first I had spent years of my life hunched over a piano, learning how to compose note by note by note. And that's still really the best way to learn how to compose. And so we still teach students exactly that way at CU. But I also learned how to, through my understanding of the mechanics of music, translate that into code. And what's fun about composing with code is that instead of working at that note by note level, now you're directing streams and flows of information and you're seeing where they lead you. So it's fun to teach that to students as well. Just as we can direct streams of sonic events, we can also direct streams of visual events. So here's an example of a kind of mechanical drawing with code. This particle that's moving across the screen, let's call that the mother particle, and its only job is to just simply move through space. Now we have the spiral particle, and its only job is to just draw circles around wherever the mother particle happens to be. Here we have a group of particles and the mother particles are speeding up and slowing down. And that's why we're starting to get this expansion and contraction patterning. And finally, let's just take a big mass of them, let them run, and discover a design through just letting them do their own thing. Some work that I've done related to this or using similar techniques this is a piece of white clay that has very thin black ink over the top of it, and a robot is scratching away that black to reveal the white underneath. 
same technique. Here, the robot is drawing spirals in ink onto a piece of watercolor paper, and then by hand, I'm using transparent paint to paint over the top of those designs. Moving from drawing with code now to fabricating objects with code, this is an installation that I did at the David B. Smith Gallery in Denver. So instead of the code drawing to a surface or drawing to a screen, now it's controlling lasers that are cutting away shapes from a 25 foot wide surface by 12 foot tall. Referencing a kind of machine intelligence that's developing everywhere, it's watching you right now, be careful. <laughs> the piece notices if you're there and it lights up in response to your presence. All of these projects I do in very close collaboration with students, everything from Design, or conceiving of the piece, to building it, to installing it, to maintaining it afterwards. Um, it's one of my favorite things to be able to work with these incredibly talented students at CU. And during my 20 years at CU, I've worked on literally hundreds of projects, either my projects or student projects that I'm facilitating. This next piece was installed at one of my very favorite places in the world which is the CU Art Museum, which is a gem of a museum. It's a piece called Swarm Wall, and it's also interactive. Essentially, it would play games with you when you would approach it. So we had, um, it was fun because we had a lot of people come back and see what kind of mood it was in the next day. It was done in collaboration with my friend Nicholas Carell, who's a roboticist, and here you see technology that he invented for this piece. There are 70 of these microcontrollers in the back of the wall, and they're paying attention the whole time to what's going on in the front and sending messages to each other constantly. And so the behavior of the piece emerges from all of those messages. And the light, the kinetic motion, and the sound, because it's essentially a gigantic percussion instrument also, are all on equal footing in this piece. The final thing I'm gonna share with you today, the final piece, was a recent commission from the city of Boulder. And those of you who lived in Boulder, I'm sure recognize the very lovely Pearl Strait Mall. Um, with this piece, I wanted to get away from the idea that the art is over here and the observer's over there. Instead, I wanted to bring it together as much as I possibly could. And the Pearl Street Mall is filled with these wonderful plantings that are just filled with colors and textures. So I wanted those inside the world of the piece. And we've got some of the most spectacular clouds and skies really in the world in Boulder, so I wanted those. But most importantly, I just wanted to create a space that anybody in this public sphere who happened to be passing by would have a good excuse to spend a little bit of time with their neighbor, experiencing something unexpected, and just have a moment to talk. The sun was a part of this piece too. Early in the morning, the sun would reflect off of the mirrors and it would create this kind of shimmering and dancing projection on the bricks and on the plants. And that was always my favorite part of the day. I'm gonna wrap this up with a light tunnel that I've created. Um, if you're in Brooklyn this summer, this is gonna be triple wide in a gallery. Um, here, though, it's signifying our journey into a mysterious future because we have no idea what kinds of new technologies we'll be developing, many at CU, I'm sure, and therefore what new kinds of expression we're going to be exploring. For example, there's maybe a kid being born right now who's gonna grow up to be an incredible painter, but when she gets to see you, she's gonna learn how to take those paintings and embed them into a virtual immersive environment. So say we strap on the goggles and we see her paintings. They're so beautiful, we're just, we're moved to tears already, but then we can also maybe swim through them or make a symphony of sound by putting our hands across the brush strokes that we can feel. Who knows? There's so many incredible art forms just around the bend. It's a really exciting time to be alive. So yes, the machines are coming, but let's make sure that we keep playing with them and discover a future that's filled with art, music, invention, and wonderful tools for expression of all different kinds. Thank you very much.